Well, hello, pre-calculus students and seekers of general truths. In this video, we will look at uh, six examples, and they're very, very quick examples. But the main idea here is to see the connection um, that will set us up for some future problems and to understand the underlying concept. So all of these six questions are phrased exactly the same way. Uh, given 10 people, how many ways are there to select a group of four? Well, if we just want to select a group of four, nothing special here. Um, there's ordering that doesn't really matter at all, right? So the answer to number one is 10 choose four, 10 combinations four, which is equal to 210. Okay. And in number two, how many ways to select a group of six? Well, this is 10 choose six, which also happens to be 210. Okay. And number three, the exact same prompt, but we want to select seven people. So given a group of, given 10 people, we want to select a group of seven. So that's 10 choose seven. And again, repetition here is not allowed. Once you choose a person, you cannot choose them again. And secondly, uh, order does not matter because we're just looking for a generic group. So 10 choose 7 is equal to 120. And then 10 choose 3 for number 4 is also 120. Okay. Hopefully you see a bit of a, a pattern emerging here. Number 5, 10 choose 2 is equal to 45. Okay. And then number six, 10 choose eight is equal to 45. Okay. So it's what I wanted to do with this video is to give you an intuitive understanding of why these particular problems have the exact same answer, right? So why is it that 10 choose four and 10 choose six have the exact same answer. Well, and then same with seven and three, two and eight, and a very surface level, a very superficial solution to this is just to say, well, four plus six is equal to 10, so they must have the same answer. Seven plus three is equal to 10, so therefore they must have the same answer. And that is superficially correct, but that doesn't really explain why, okay? So maybe I can try to explain why uh, in this way, using our example of 10 people, right? So let's say that we had 10 people in a room and let's just label them A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J. I think that's 10. And if we pick four of them, let's say we pick these four, okay? That's the same thing as not picking these six people. So you can look at combinations as really a way of separating. When I say I'm picking a group of four, I'm also saying I am not, I'm, I am picking six people to eliminate. Right? When I say I'm picking a group of six, I am also saying that I'm picking four people to eliminate. Okay? So the number of ways for me to choose four people is precisely the identical number of ways for me to choose six people given, notice here 10 is the number that I'm beginning with here, okay? Same thing with choosing seven versus choosing three. If I decide that I'm gonna choose a group of three, right? I am also deciding that I am choosing the other group of seven here to eliminate. So the number of possible ways for me to choose seven people is exactly the number of ways for me to choose three people if I'm starting out with, with 10. So this gets us to a very uh, wonderful and helpful identity here in the world of factorial and combinatorics is that N choose R. So, and I'm actually, let me write it this, let me write it a different way here. Um, N choose R, let me write it this way. N choose R is in fact equal to N choose n minus r. Okay. So for me to choose, if I give, let's use the example here, like 10 is n, r is seven. 
So 10 choose 7 is the same thing as 10 choose 10 minus 7. So to choose r people is the same thing as to choose n minus r people to eliminate. Okay? And so you will see this symmetry show up um, as you work through these problems with combinations. And in the next video, we are going to prove this result rigorously. As always, ask for questions. Ask questions if you need them. Ask for help if you need it. Thank you for watching and have a wonderful day.